Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, the whole entire shape of WWE is about to change, or that's what they want you to think. Before the NFL draft, WWE is putting on, or we are going to put on, our version of the upcoming WWE draft, which will include Raw, SmackDown, and literally for the first time ever, I'm not kidding, I'm not making this up like last year, NXT will be involved in in the draft so it's going to be a very historic draft indeed and we are going to try to predict what is going to happen before it happens we're all going to be absolutely wrong so sit back relax willie t and king ricky do what they do best argue about picks all the time it's the it is our version of the 2024 wwe draft it's draft day here on king's rings podcast exclusively on wrestling radio and it starts right now Oh, it's going to be a very interesting episode. We get to do draft analysis right before the NFL draft. It's going to be, it's going to be good. Are you doing anything for the NFL draft, Will? No. Oh, what? When's the NFL? When's the NFL draft? It's actually Thursday when the show drops. Is it, yeah. Is, isn't it always on a Thursday? It, the first round, so they split. It's it's it usually like. It used to be like Saturday, Sunday, but now it's like first rounds Thursday night, second rounds um, Friday, and then like three through seven are over the weekend, and no one really watches those. Yeah, no one watches. Yeah, no one watches. Those. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I don't know. All I, right. think, I don't. I don't. I don't care about football <laughs> that much. Yeah, no. It's. It, I just want to see. I'm trying to go to a draft party or something. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Talk to me in fantasy. Football. Yeah, exactly. That's that's all I'm watching it for is for fantasy football reasons. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King's Rings podcast episode. Number 373 Draft Day. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us uh, this week. If you like what you see or hear, please leave us a five-star review, like, share, subscribe. Links to all of our stuff are in the description below. It is a two-man show. Kayfabe is out. Uh, the, the future GM of Monday Night Raw is out, but K has, K has left their picks. We're going to talk about all things draft where we, but before we get to that, let me introduce my host with I guess I don't know kind of the most as I screw up his scene transition but kind kind of the most on the analysis uh of picks that he's probably going to fail pretty miserably yep. at Keep stalling. yeah rejected Keep stalling. rejected why at six am. rejected why at six member uh well Tarasak how are you yeah the why at six I think is gonna be pretty fun uh since kayfabe but it's pretty much screwed the whole draft for me yeah still like three or four of my picks I'm just gonna take all of the why at six first <laughs> <laughs> Well, it means you're gonna have to define the Wyatt Six in and of itself. So that's okay. Uh, I'll I'll try. I can give you th- three of them. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very interesting. Um, <laughs> I mean, we can name all the future Wyatt Six. That'd be a prediction in and of itself. It's really bad. Great Kali. <laughs> um. Uh, JoJo. Okay. Um, the Great Kali again. <laughs> Lana. Alberto Del Rio and El Torito. Oh, I would I'd be down for El Torito. Oh, and Andrew Zarian. <laughs> yeah, he's a six member. He's a six member of it all. Uh, that that would be wild. Yeah, no, I. It's really bad because like I should be into this wide six thing and doing the the screen code and stuff, but like it's just not there for me. I don't know why. Yeah, like you know it is because I kind of know it's coming. So it's just like, uh, maybe. Yeah, the white the white rabbit was a little bit. What is this? Yeah. Where this time it's just like, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah. But at the, at the same time, I'm interested to see. I th- I'm glad we're starting here because I think this is going to be very good for Bo Dallas. Because did you did you watch uh, Bray's documentary? I need to. I haven't yet. I've been pretty lazy at that. It's. I don't know what's more sad: the fact that Bray is gone, or that Bo is left behind as just a broken man. Like, and I, I yeah. mean that as a form of compassion and like, I feel sorry for him. Yeah. Um, not of like weakness. Um, so I think this character is going to be a very good way for him to heal. So that is what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good way for Eric Rowan to heal so they can honor both Bray and Luke Harper. Absolutely. So in that aspect, I'm very excited for it. But you know the dramatics. It's yeah. It's it's anticlimactic from a cinematic storytelling standpoint. You were correct. Yeah, yeah. So I hope creatively it does help Bo to heal because like I vividly re- like watching Bray and Bo's dad IRS just kind of he struggled through that weekend. 
Yeah, of yeah. It was. It was. I saw it. And so I was like, "This man's not doing well at all," um, and things like that. So hopefully that that provides some healing for even him as well. If he can see Bray's vision through through his son and stuff. And speaking of visions through sons and WrestleMania in and of itself, uh, I, we would be remiss if we didn't wish as we are recording on the day of the birth of our uh, our elder statesman and our North American treasure, Fretz, Mister Fretz of the Fretzelmania podcast, turned forty today, folks. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, right. He's as old as WrestleMania. I don't know. I guess he's doing well. He's on his way back from, from the casino for his 40th. Uh, I, I hope you won something, Fretz. Yeah, I hope you won like 40 grand, which in Canadian is like, what, 32 grand? No, it would <laughs> be, no, it'd be like 65. 65? Something like that. I, my map's not off. No, our money is worth <laughs> more than theirs. Yes, yeah, so that means... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but if I, was, if I was to charge someone $500 for something, yeah. it would cost 800 Canadian. I know because I tried charging a Canadian $500. And he said that actually costs this much. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, oops. <laughs> yeah, so that means- yeah Canadian, Canadian things are more expensive. Yes, so they are. 40 grand in Canadian is probably like 32. Oh, you grand. said 40 grand in Canadian. I would have said 40 grand like American. My fault. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, no, 40 grand Canadian. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Fresh remembers Jim Crow. Wasn't that far away? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> It's a little bit further. It's a little bit further back than that. That's a great one, though. To quote, I have to give you that one. That one's really good. You know, I'm really glad Jim Crow is that old. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, but friends, I hope you have a good birthday. You need to win something. Um, happy birthday, buddy. happy birthday, friends. You you are a gem, and uh, uh, hope we didn't get hoodwinked by a hooker. No, no, not an Orlando hooker, at least. Um, <laughs> if you've ever been forty dollars, not forty grand. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So we're gonna get into all of that stuff. But first, we gotta recap some stuff happening over the weekend. Like, for instance, there is some news coming out about WrestleMania, and the news is we know absolutely nothing. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so, bastard. Yeah. So I was like, he would have texted me. Yeah, I would have. I would have. It would have. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what we do know. Um, Nick Khan was asked about the location of WrestleMania 41 uh, at a sports business conference uh, like over the weekend or last week. And Nick Khan revealed uh, the obvious that it's not the the WrestleMania 41 is not going to be on the East Coast. It's not going to uh, it's probably not going to compete anymore with the final four or MLB. Mm-hmm. As a, or MLB's opening weekend, which historically WrestleMania has always done. So smart move, Nick. <laughs> smart move. It is probably going to be either earlier in the, like a March or probably, I think, for the betterment of everybody, based on how sick I fucking felt, um, to be later on in April, which isn't that big of an issue. Uh, he did confirm that one city that was in contention was Vegas. Of course. Of course, um, he's going to hint at it. Yeah. He did confirm that one city in contention was Vegas, and he also did confirm that there was going to be an announcement about the WrestleMania 41 location uh, sometime next month in the month of May. It has been widely speculated that it's probably between Vegas, uh, who has the Allegiant Stadium, home of my Las Vegas Raiders, um, or be Minnesota, home of the Minnesota Vikings, which also has a. Which also has, That's what sound I think Minnesotans make. They, they don't do. I know some Minnesotans. <laughs> do not make that noise at all. <laughs> it's like you poke them in a tummy. That's just what they do. <laughs> yeah. Or Minnesota, home of the Vikings and U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, I don't think we've had a WrestleMania that far north since like the Chicago Manias. Again, this would yeah. be in a, it's been a while. this would be in a uh, domed uh, stadium as, as well. Uh, it is interesting that it's taken this long to get the WrestleMania 41 location, which means there is probably some very intricate details that are trying to be mapped out and, and figured out. WWE itself has done big events in Vegas before. They had SummerSlam when Becky screwed over Bianca um, mm-hmm. and the return of a guy named Bork Lesnar um, also came that uh, that weekend as well. So Allegiant Stadium already has a track record of doing a major WWE event. Minnesota would be uncharted territory, almost quite literally. The biggest wrestling event coming out of Minnesota that's the most popular one that people know about is the first episode of Nitro was in the Mall of the Americas. Yes. You know, so it's, 
Minis- I'm I myself am interested in going to Minnesota. I know, Will, you've done Vegas. I've done Vegas before. I kind of want to go back as an adult to Vegas. That'd be cool for me. But for me, I kind of been more interested in seeing Minnesota and also being in the Midwest and seeing another part of America that I haven't seen more so than Vegas. I would be okay with either. I kind of have a connect that can get us a timeshare in Vegas. So there's that. Um, but, Will, for you, who do you, what location? If it's between Vegas and Minnesota, where do you want to go? I mean, to be fair, I've never went to Vegas for fun. I've only fair been enough. to Vegas for work. Yeah. So <laughs> I have been told by literally every single person that Vegas is way different when you're there for fun. That's true. So I would be totally fine with Vegas. Although keep in mind, a bottle of water in Caesar's Palace is like eleven dollars. Yeah, and that's it's just rough. a regular. It's just a regular bottle of water. So for my wallet <laughs> and how much an amazing time I had in Philadelphia because it was close. Yeah, I would rather go to Minnesota, and because it's a completely different part of the country, I would like to explore, and it's kind of. Check it out. Like we maybe like, I, I'm totally down for never doing WrestleCon ever again. Um, I, I kind of agree with you. And like one day of access, <laughs> like if we if we did just a uh, one day of access, one day of this like city shit. Yeah, I think that'd be totally worth it. Whereas Vegas, you know, we can go see a show. Like I'm sure Jeff Dunham will be there. Yeah, <laughs> doing puppet shit. So I'm cool with either or. I'll probably go to either or, but. Uh, I would rather go to Minnesota for financial and just when the fuck am I ever going to go back? Seriously. And if it is. Like, I, I, I can do Vegas. Like, Ricky, me and you could do a weekend in Vegas just for shits and giggles. We could. We could. Like, like a long weekend. But also, to, for WrestleMania points, um, if he pushes it to the end of April, I think that's totally fine. Just keep in mind, 420 is Easter Sunday next year. <laughs> I just looked that up. So, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If you want to, if you want to compete with uh, baseball in March, Matt, or uh, Final Four, that makes all the sense in the world. Just, man, you could probably beat out Jesus, but I wouldn't put money on. Yeah, it. Jesus would be a hard <laughs> one to beat. Um, that might you might have to bring back Messiah Seth Rollins for that. Uh, the the one thing that I mean is is Minnesota religious? Is Minnesota like super Catholic? Uh, Christian more so. I don't. The Mid- I, Christian? I have no idea. The Midwest is more Lutheran and Christian, uh, from what I know. Mm-hmm. So it's like I I can relate to them because I grew up Christian. I grew up Lutheran. Um, so I can I can blend in pretty well there. Uh, the one thing that's intriguing to me about Vegas, outside of it being Vegas, um, you have the potential of Raw and SmackDown being in the spear. Oh, yeah, it's so fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that, that, God, did you just fear? I'm not gonna lie, this fear is fucking really cool. Yeah. It's so cool <laughs> for no reason. I'm just like, I don't know how this isn't like. So there's a law in New Jersey that they want to get rid of, like you know those um like funny hot highway signs for you to buckle up or like get a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. click it or take like, it. Want, they want to take those down because it's distracting. I don't know really? how Vegas was. Yes, <laughs> yes, because drivers are stupid. They're complaining about it. Okay. Like it's distracting. Oh, but the billboard ad about like, I hate Steven Singer is totally fine. And the, and, the, and the press production is totally fine. But anyway, my point is the Vegas sphere, like how that's not a distraction Seriously. to literally everybody for miles. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's astounding. Like, they've literally made the spear with, like, a giant eyeball that, like, looks around. Like, how does that not fuck somebody up? <laughs> yeah, and how has it not been this a giant tit? Seriously. It's just, 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 just like a Pam Anderson breast. <laughs> Bam! It's right up there. <laughs> right there. For Thanksgiving. Yeah. Be like, enjoy your white meat. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Raw or SmackDown, even NXT in the spear would be freaking unbelievable. Yeah, um, it's just gonna be so expensive. Will, like hotels yeah. there are so. You much I oh God, I look at the I look at the receipts for when I'm traveling for work because obviously I get like sometimes I get room service and I get like shipped <laughs> to the mini fridge. So I just look at the bill at the end. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, the other wow. <laughs> the other thing for me is like, if they do push it back and they do do Minnesota, honestly, I'd be down to see a Twins game. That ballpark yes. looks fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. ballpark that looks ballpark so much looks incredible. Pretty, yeah, it looks incredible. <laughs> I, it's just gonna be cold, which I'm not gonna like. It's but fine. Whatever. Yeah, I, I'd be down to see a Twins game and just like try to survive the Mall of the Americas. Although I wonder if um, the Twins would be home because that's gonna they would probably move them out. 
they'd probably be on the road. Yeah, right? they'd probably like, move them out. The Phillies were on the road. That's that's the thing about the like, games WrestleMania we keep going to. It's like we're gonna go see a baseball team. But, no, oh, we're no, not. Wait, we're we're <laughs> replacing the baseball team. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. But I don't know how close uh Target Field is is to US Bank Stadium, so they might be able to get away True. with it. Sure, it could be really spread out. Yeah. But like it's a downtown area. It's just the city's gonna be packed. Yeah, I I yeah, I'm I'm interested in being in US Bank Arena. That that place looks great. Uh but who knows? We're gonna find out. We are going to find out um, next month, so fingers crossed. Watch that go to, like, New Orleans again. I'll be like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, dude, that might, that might be, well, it won't be my, won't be my bachelor party when I think about it. <laughs> that might be it. But here's what we do know is that NXT is going to Vegas for Battleground on June 9th, and here's the kicker, Will. It's going to be held at UFC's Apex Building. So for the first time ever, we are getting a little of WWE merging with the merging with UFC in a very creative way. The Apex Building, I believe, is I do not believe you might know more of me is was I think Fight Island per se, but UFC yes. yes, yes, it's Fight Island for people who don't know what UFC Apex is. NXT Battleground, one of their big shows of the year, is going to be in Fight Island at the UFC Apex Building. And I don't know. It's small. I look. Like, I don't know how they're going to pull that off, or what they're going to do, or how tickets are going to be for that. But what are your initial thoughts, Will, on on this on this creative on this creative leap that they're taking? Oh, dude, they saved so much money not having to book a venue. Are you <laughs> kidding me? They're like, hey, UFC, we're just going to borrow this warehouse. Hope you don't mind. Like, thanks, partner. You know, like we talking <laughs> for, partner. So yeah, my first thought is, God damn, Nick Khan is a really good businessman. Yeah. The other con to take notes. Um, and yeah, I mean, cool. I'm excited to see what they do. It's, it's good. It's good publicity for the UFC. You know, the UFC is valued at what, like $11 billion that came out the other day. Yeah. So the, the so. breakdown, I, I want to, I, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to mention that, but the breakdown is this UFC is at 11, like 11, nine WWE is at like nine, nine is. And then yeah, coming in third is like, uh, AEW with like three, five. And it was Forbes is like. Uh, most yeah, AEW is AEW is like we're worth between two and three billion. Yeah, two and which three is billion. A, which is which is crazy. Like honestly, let's take a pause there. Yeah, like I know we like to shit on how bad of a business that is mm -hmm. AEW is from like a booking perspective, but you're very to two billion dollars. You're doing something right. Yeah, you're doing something. Like productive. that's that that is that is incredible news for AEW. Yeah, and I do not want to undercut that. Yeah, I, I'm interested in how much they put into like the Con family net worth as a like that like um. Into that yeah. estimation of a number, I'm very interested in that. It's like 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 a, like a, a credit line. Yeah, that's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah, like how long could you be in business? Yeah, uh, yeah, because you know, you know, estimated worth is kind of it's literally just a number. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. guess. It's an educated yeah. but guess, but still, still. Yeah, no, I I remember seeing people online being like, "Oh, everybody says AEW is bad, but they're number three. I'm like, I was like the top two, the top two fighting companies. Are the same company, and if you add it together, it's over twenty billion compared to your three. I get it's a great accolade, but you can still got a long ways to go, guys. Yeah, dude, you, you, you could cut both of them in half, it's and they're still, still more in than third. you. Yeah, and they're still in third. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you know, take take your W, but yeah. don't be comparing apples and oranges. Seriously, what I, I mean, especially when you, you've been in business for four years, five over know, five, five over five. So you're still a young company, you know. Yeah. They're still going through growing pains, but. You know, just stop talking about CM Punk, and that's a start. <laughs> it's, they're turning on Jericho now too. It's hysterical. Um, I also yeah, they are. It's weird. <laughs> Jericho's time has come. Um, I find it interesting that the battleground logo that we're looking at here on the screen looks kind of like Double or Nothing, which is happening around the same time. Yeah, it is, it is pretty. It is pretty nice. Also, I, I want to just touch on Taquan. What did you say? Mania, go, Mania goes to Wyoming. <laughs> um, honestly, if they did a Sturgis Mania, I would. I would not be that upset. It would be like Hog. Was it Hog Wild that they did there? It's Hog Wild. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's like one of the it's one it's in one of the one of the uh, one of the Dakotas. Yeah. <laughs> it's <just> all <laughs> wild. Do you like WrestleMania Yellowstone Park? Like, <laughs> oh god, you have to fight Dude, That's 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 when Yellowstone would burst in the world. Would end. <laughs> the WrestleMania Forty One Doomsday. <laughs> you have to fight until the geyser goes off. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> fight forever, but not really. <laughs> that would be amazing. So NXT Battleground uh, was announced. Also, the weekend over this weekend, 
is a crazy wrestling renaissance because TNA put on a fantastic show, apparently, uh, over the weekend. And the highlight of the show was the return of Broken Matt Hardy. <laughs> Broken Matt Hardy has returned to TNA. He is currently, I believe, a free agent, not under AEW contract. And, and the Broken One has returned. He took out TNA stalwart Moose. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get ready to pop some heads. And apparently is going to do, at least for what we know now, um, and according to my my favorite person at Chipotle, who talks wrestling with me as he makes my makes my bowl. Um, oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's that's, good. that's a good friend. To he's have. a great friend to have, actually. You keep, you keep him close. Oh yeah, no, I, I I I always wear wrestling stuff all the time, so he knows it's me. And my goodness, my bowl for lunch was stuffed, <laughs> absolutely stuffed. It was fantastic. I'm surprised I ate dinner. Be it as it be it as it may, <laughs> Matt Hardy's on a on a Celtic shack run. He just might be. He just wow. Might, he just might. Wow, <laughs> dude, that that is a burn. <laughs> he just Jack was really bad. At the Celtics. <laughs> yeah. I forgot he was on the Celtics. It's, it's yeah. I think he called himself the Big AARP when he was on the Celtics. Yeah, or something like no. That was his retirement nickname. Um. But no, Broken Matt Hardy's back. There was hints that Matt Hardy might be on his way back to be a potential member of the of the infamous Wyatt Six. The Wyatt Six. Which would be honestly would be really cool to see. Um yeah. but for right now we know he's making a stop in TNA, maybe gonna do something with Moose. Who knows how long he's gonna stay? But things are really incredibly balanced in wrestling right now. Like TNA is making headlines on a consistent basis this year. And I don't think I've been around wrestling for that long to recognize the last time that TNA did something like that. I know you have, Will, but not Dude, me. It's amazing. It's amazing how they're just a cockroach of wrestling. <laughs> they just will not fucking die. Yeah. They just won't go away. Not at all. But every now and then, they just, they just, you know, it's just, it's the same guys coming in and out. They get it right somehow. Like, all right, I'll watch this guy. Yeah. All right, I'll watch this guy. <laughs> You know what? Kurt Angle's there for six years. All right, I'll watch TNA. <laughs> so it's the next thing you know, Sting will be there. Yeah, right. Because you just can't <laughs> retire. Um, can't retire at all. Also, TNA has Joe Hendry and the greatest theme song in wrestling right now. Do you believe in Joe Hendry? I, I do not. You, He's not real. <laughs> he, needs, he needs to believe in Joe Hendry. He's not real. Like he, he can't hurt me. <laughs> I'm waiting for a baseball player to use it as their walk-up song. Think about that. <laughs> All right. So, maybe when DJ comes back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Say his name and he appears. I believe in LeMayhew. <laughs> Although he like he like hurt his foot in his rehab. Did he, he break it? Rehabs. I don't know, but like uh, he left his rehab game early because his foot was sore. Jesus, how are you doing? By the way, I've not been able to keep it's score. It's five. It's like four three. Okay, that's oh, that's a little bit too close for my liking. Um, yes, yeah, Strowman set up a bunch of solo. It, it's runs. it's a weird it's a weird time in New York when the Knicks are like the hottest team. It's a very weird time in New York right now. Yeah, not for long. Though. Yeah, yeah. The, let them let them get through the first round, and then I'll just like the it. Celtics. The Celtics are no joke. I don't believe in God, but I sure as hell do believe in Joe Henry. That's right, Taquan. That's exactly what you're supposed to say. So yeah, the Yankees get a lot of strikeouts. Stroman has eight Ks. Jesus Christ, Marcus Stroman. Schmidt Schmidt had nine the other night. Like Rodone had a bunch last night. The Yankees get a lot of strikeouts. That's good, that's good to hear. And somehow TNA doesn't strike out. At all in any way, shape, or form. So that's all the news of Pin Boot. We would talk about AW Dynasty if you ever watched it, uh, but we heard good things. So I do want to acknowledge from AW Dynasty that AW actually did something that took WWE over 50 years to do, and that is crown an African American world heavyweight champion. Congratulations to Swerve, who has become the top guy um, by beating Samoa Joe in AEW Dynasty. So that is something to, to, to note uh, for them right now but it is time folks to talk about the wwe draft so historically in the past couple of uh in the past couple of years in the past couple of times that they have done um a draft in wwe it has only been literally smackdown and raw and they split it up where raw would get three picks 
two SmackDowns, two picks based on the hours that that show is on TV on a weekly basis. And I mean, it made sense. It, it was it, stupid, but it made yeah. sense. Like I got it. Yeah. I was like, I would have done that too. It made it made it made it made a lot of logical sense. Uh, so now that the old guard is out of the way, <laughs> and Triple H and Shawn Michaels, formerly known as the original members of DX, run the show, which in a wrestling fan kayfabe perspective is the wildest thing you can think of. Like, think about when they got formed. Like, what's the wildest thing you can think of? Oh, yeah, DX runs WWE. Well, folks, DX runs WWE quite yeah. literally. And At least creative. Creatively, yeah. Yeah. DX runs WWE creatively. And as Triple H's vision originally was this entire time, he wanted NXT to be the third brand. And it is seemingly the route that they are going with NXT officially being the third brand in the WWE draft. So there's no more. I don't, I think they're going to move away from NXT being purely developmental. I feel like a lot of people will get their start in NXT, but with NXT getting essentially their own new TV deal on the CW, which is going to be probably, which is the most, the, uh, the television station that's on like almost any form of television. Like it's on the most TVs in all of them yeah. in all of America. It's not it's not a huge network, but but it's there. It's, it's you can you can find it. Is that's the thing? People people they know it exists. They know it exists, and then you have Raw, which is going to be the obviously the Savage Brand moving to Netflix and SmackDown going over to USA later on in the year. They're starting to move. They're starting to pivot NXT into a more prominent role in in their in their do TV they, lexicon. Do they tour? You think they tour? I think they're going to move to touring soon. Bigger, bigger arenas. Maybe, or you know, I think they'll do. And it's not a jab, and I think they're gonna do AW size arenas, maybe to start off, or something a little smaller. Yeah, like like well, what the the arena we did in Providence for Money in the Bank. Correct. Yeah. Like 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 like, like the college arenas. Yeah, col- I think they'll do college arenas. Yeah, Which, like Syracuse. Yeah, because I think you do college arenas. That is also a good recruiting tool. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do I th- like I think I think NXT should remain. As like I, I'm totally fine with it being a third brand and yeah. being in the draft and more like included in WWE programming mm-hmm. to get like the the audience you lost back. It's a great way to get the audience you lost, like me trying to get them back into NXT. Yeah, it's like, hey, come back. We're sorry. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 we're, we're better now. All right, like, yeah. hey, you up? Like seriously. So, so it's I think it's smart to make them more known and included. However, that developmental process is so important and core to getting someone from the indies and getting them used to the WWE style. Like, it's so important. Like, Jade needed those six months in developmental without being on TV. Yeah. So, which, which will always be there, right? The performance center is not going anywhere. Absolutely. But I like that NXT is a place where you can go and be on TV and make mistakes. Yes. And, and try things out and have a playground. Like, it's it's almost better that no one watches or less people watch because you can fuck up and it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, when you look when you look at it, the LW, like Joaquin Wilde and uh, Cruz, you know the spot they did where they catapulted him off the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, they first did that on, a, on an episode of NXT. And it got yeah, such NXT a... Spot. It was an NXT spot. And it got such... It went viral. It was... It's a crazy spot, especially as 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 small as the NXT arena is. That they they kept doing it, and now they, and they were able to do that same spot at WrestleMania, and it's still a great spot. Yeah, like, you know NXT as a testing ground for things is a what is a great concept uh, as well. But I think Trips is going to move to Trips and and Mister Hickenbottom um, is going to are going to move to make it more more inclusive with you know, with things going on, which so in that manner, the draft is going to have, you're going to have some superstars who aren't being used regularly, or maybe even have past NXT, uh, you know, star power going back to NXT to help kind of even out the playing field per se uh, with them. So with that being said, we are going to initiate our own version, our prediction. This is going to be a part of our official yearly prediction battle right now of where, we think the draft is going to uh, where the superstars are going to end up during the draft. So the draft is a two show process. The first part of a draft is going to be on SmackDown. Obviously, there will probably be picks that are not televised. I'm in mean, the second half of the draft will be after Monday Night Raw this past Monday. Uh, so the full roster is at our disposal. Every member of KOTR have been has been given GM uh, powers 
for prospective brands. Uh, Kayfabe, who is not here with us, uh, is the GM of Raw. Fucking cheated. <laughs> yeah, so Kayfabe's <laughs> picks have already been put in. Oh, it's going to be 67 tomorrow. I'm going to bring out the short shorts. Um, Will Tarashak, Willie T, has been selected as the GM of SmackDown, and myself will be the general manager of NXT. With that being said, everybody is able to be drafted. Um, including champions. The only champions that are not eligible to be drafted are the NXT champions, and that is because the NXT champion championships are brand-specific. So it's the NXT women's champion, the NXT men's champion, the NXT North American champion, the women, NXT women's North American champion. Right, well, you, you can't put them. I'm not that moving them. The only champions yeah. that are not going to be able to be selected from from Raw and SmackDown are the Kabuki Warriors, since they are the only ta- only women's tag champions. They will be they floating. Rotate. They go everywhere. They will be yeah, floating, they and they can go anywhere they want, so they will not be able to be selected. So we're not going to do the entire roster, because that would be absolute madness, and WWE hasn't released their format for this draft at all. So what we are going to do is we are going to do 10 rounds of of selection. So each each brand will have 10 choices. You can select an individual superstar, obviously a champion because you're going to need on Raw and SmackDown a world, a women's, uh, a mid-card, and a tag champion. Um, so those are kind of pre-selected already since K already put in their picks. Uh, but you can also select tag teams and or factions. They do count as one pick for yep. your brand. So if you were to pick, like, for instance, A Town Down Under, just using them as an example, even though they are champions, they are a tag team. The tag teams count as one pick. Pretty deadly as a group, count as one t- pick. Final Testament, Acom, Razar, Paul Ellering, uh, Karrion Cross, Scarlet, all count as, as one, as pick. one yeah. pick. So that is how we're going to go. So with that being said, let's open up the first round, which is kind of already selected, except for me. Um with the world champions, Kayfabe. We're going to talk about Kayfabe selects, and I kind of have a feeling I know why Kayfabe chose this person as their champion of champions for the brand is Damian Priest remains on Raw, according to Kayfabe, uh, as the w- as the world heavyweight champion. And will I will say this, I believe it's because Damian Priest is now getting social media buzz as being called the bisexual undertaker. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I see it. <laughs> I totally see it. Like, this guy kicks ass, but he can also down a car. (laughs) (laughs) What I I do like about... um, And the purple, the tights, the deep voice, the mustache. It's all all there. It's all there. there. It's all there. Man, power to him, man. His name is Punishment. Punishment (laughs) Martinez was his original name. Yeah. His indie name was Punishment. Like, come on. (laughs) Oh, it's... It it's all it's all there. there. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it walks like a duck, it talks like a duck, and it waddles, it's a duck. That's the other good thing about what I what I noticed in um on Raw this week. Damian Priest and Jay are going to be fighting at Backlash, which we're going to talk about. I think next week we're going to do a Backlash prediction show. So it's we're just we're in pay per view hell at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, it's I'm I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. They let they let Damien and Jay Uso do an elongated segment. Like the promo seemed to be less scripted and more kind of ad lib between the superstars and competitors on Raw. Like uh Sheamus and Drew went at it too. It was pre- Interesting. It was, yeah. Well, this is last night. Yeah, this is last night on Raw, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it probably tomorrow. Yeah, the- <laughs> or tonight when we get off here, maybe. Yeah, it was it was kind of I will say this. Uh Sheamus did the whole banger after banger thing, and Drew was like, well, Judging by the look of you, it looks like it's burger after burger after burger after Man, burger. Man, poor Seamus. <laughs> like, he, okay, like, the, the picture going around, personally, I think it was just a bad angle. He doesn't look <laughs> awful. He doesn't. He's, he, like, he's, he, don't let me, he's, like, was he's in worse shape than when he left, but he thought his career was over. He like, had a bad ago. neck. He had a really bad neck injury. Yeah. Like, he was fucked up. Yeah. So, is he chunky? Yeah. He's He'll get big. it back. He'll be fine. He'll get it back. Yeah. But also... His old music is back. Yes, it is. Yes, the, it the is. The OG song. I was like, is that the, oh, is that, yeah. is that is our strike? Oh, day? <laughs> like, my favorite. Am I a Seamus fan now? Can I draft Seamus first? Like, that was what that happened here. That was one of the jokes. They were like, too many pies. Too many too pies. Many pies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, dude, it's a great song. I was so shocked when I heard it. Yeah. So I even I put down my Steam Deck. I was like, just no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So with that being said, obviously Damian Priest, that means Will Tarrant's like the GM of SmackDown gets adrenaline in his soul, yeah. something, something Cody Rhodes, which I mean, you essentially have the franchise of WWE on your show currently right now. Where do you think he gets drafted real life? Oh, boy. He has, to, he has to go to Raw. I don't know. Dude, you want your poster boy on Raw to bring in that Netflix deal so when The Rock comes back, it's on Netflix. Like, when does Rock come back? When do they debut on Netflix? That's when The Rock comes January back. January of 2025. Yeah, that's when The Rock comes back. I think he stays on SmackDown because SmackDown is broadcast TV. Mm. So is Raw until the end of the year. No, we're just, it's 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 Fox compared to Fox compared to USA. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that okay. I think that's that's what it is right now. So you're gonna trust Damian Priest to lead Raw into the Netflix deal? At least until October, because remember, we still don't know what the hell they're doing from October to January because the okay the USA the USA deal ends in October and they have they have three months to figure out what the hell they're gonna do. Honestly, this is gonna be this is gonna be a good test for where WWE sees the market. Yeah. Like where do they currently see more value in the market? Is it still broadcast TV with all those ad dollars and Fox money? Or is it we gotta put our horse behind streaming and Netflix? I think they Honestly, already show, I, I think they showed their hand when with the Netflix deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but now you guys see oh, who's your main guy going to go to, net streaming or cable. Yeah. Like, because Cody's the main guy. Like, I, I like Demon Priest, but Cody's the guy. Cody's He's the, the top guy. guy in the company. Yeah. He's the guy. So you're going to have your guy lead you to Netflix streaming or potentially more money in cable. It's, it's just an interesting thing to see. I can't I don't know. say you're wrong and disprove your argument other than just I think Netflix is the better option. Cause it's, yeah, I, I think it's more I so – it's, it's more so like – Cody's still Cody's still a babyface Homelander, yeah. And you and it's like Homelander on Fox. It makes perfect sense. They eat that shit up. <laughs> they eat that shit up. Um, I think he, I think he goes to Raw, but you're gonna go smack. Well, he's drafting me on SmackDown. He's, he's, so I, get yeah, he's on SmackDown. I get the point if he goes. I get the point if he goes. To exactly. SmackDown. You will get the point. So if our if our selections are correct, uh, then we get a point towards our prediction. Uh, which, like I said, we haven't. I haven't gone through the AEW Dynasty stuff yet. Uh, so we'll cur- that's fine. We'll tentatively is still in the lead by at least two. Dur- I love how we're slowly turning the show into fantasy wrestling. So play, play with us at home; it's gonna be fun. Yeah, seriously. I mean, we could always we could always rebrand. I'll talk to the Queen, and we can always re- restart the uh, the fantasy wrestling league that we did for that I did for a while. It's fun. Yeah, totally. It is very fun. Um, okay, so my pick, my first pick, is going to be. Uh, I don't think an actual controversy here, but it's going to be the first. I think shocker uh, of the whole thing, especially since he's. His group's been doing so well, but he hasn't been doing well. However, he did officially say he has resigned, and there was nothing like his second run in NXT that kind of made showed everybody who the fuck he is as a performer. Finn Balor to NXT. Again. Oh, you're taking Finn? Mm-hmm. That's not your second pick. That's my first pick, because I don't have... That's your first... Oh, you have a champion? My champions are already selected. Because remember, they're brand-specific, so like... Oh, so, okay, so we're doing 10 picks plus champions or 10 picks including champions? So my champions aren't eligible because I'm already in NXT, so, like, why would I put them in the draft pool? Oh, right. Because they're brand-specific, right, okay. so, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. I got it. So okay, some so of your picks pick, are okay. already picked for you because you have – because K was not here. Because K already picked. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Got it, got it, yeah. got it. So, yeah, no, I'm going with Finn. I think Finn returns to NXT. I think if you're going to elevate NXT to what it – to a, an inkling of what it used to be when it originally started, you need somebody who was kind of – "Quote unquote," an NXT original who also, in his second return, had a phenomenal run and carried that brand like yeah. really well. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like once uh, once the undisputed left, uh, Finn Balor came in and was just like, hey, blah, blah, blah. "Yeah, I got this." Yeah, no, he did. He did an excellent job. He doesn't need Judgment Day. Judgment Day did its job with Rhea and Damian. Judgment Day is falling apart at the seams, kind of in a weird way. Um, yeah. So I think it'll be fine for Finn to Finn to leave. So I'm going officially with Finn Balor as my as my first pick. Uh, so there's that. So let's move on. Uh, then from that, uh, obviously, Kayfabe's pick. 
We're going to go with the women, women's world champion. Obviously, my women's world champion is already selected. Uh, so t- technically, currently already on my roster is, you know, Ilya, Roxanne Perez, which I didn't think they were going to move Roxanne anyways, to be honest with you. Oba Femi. Yeah. Sorry, Will. <laughs> um, I doubt I was going to draft him. I swear to fucking Christ. Uh, the Heritage Cup champion and the NXT um, the NXT tag champ, the men's tag champs are also there as well. Uh, but Kayfabe is uh, gonna gonna make things really interesting because I think this is actually is a high possibility of happening. Um, Bailey goes from SmackDown, according to Kay, to Raw. So that means you'd have the world champion on Raw and the WWE women's champion on Raw as well. And I think there's a high possibility of them splitting up and mix and matching uh, world like WWE titles and world titles because that's what makes the most sense if you're going to get away from those brand specific titles that gives you the freedom to mix things up and i think that's actually what, what's going to happen with bailey and i like huh. i yeah i like the bailey move because even though which means will gets becky lynch even though bailey is hot right now she still doesn't have the becky lynch star power and if you're gonna push you know if you're gonna push fox because they're on broadcast tv you're gonna need some heavy hitters and becky who won the battle royal um to to get Rhea's title i think becky going to smackdown would be a good would be a power move just based on star power alone and bailey can do what she needs to do on raw also michael cole's on raw and there's nothing like the bailey and michael cole rivalry yeah no i agree i think bailey going to raw is also a good pick (laughs) Mm -hmm. um I can't, I did like how all the world titles were on one brand and all the WWE titles were on another brand, mm-hmm. but I guess it makes sense what you're saying to split them up because that just makes them brand specific. Also, so you didn't really change anything. Yeah. So in that case, uh, I am a rejected Wyatt six member. That's pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it makes sense to mix and mash and split them up. So I think Bailey also makes sense on Raw, but on my pick, I'm glad I got Becky Lynch. Um, actually, let me rephrase. I'm glad it's not Liv Morgan. Um, <laughs> it's a good swear. But I, 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 I do want to talk about Liv not yeah, getting Becky, the title. Yeah, win the title. I think it's – I honestly, I think it's a mistake. I think Triple H should have rode the hot hands, cat strike when the iron's hot, and give that heat to Liv because she would make her a mega star. Instead, they played it safe and they went with Becky. They were, which I, which I understand. Yeah, it was a desperation move. Yeah, it's like when all else fails, you give it to Cena. Yeah, that that's what it is. And like, kudos to Becky because Becky was guaranteed a break. Yeah. She wasn't supposed to be around, and she got called back, and now she's doing this. Like her, and Seth had surgery, so Seth's not around for a while because he tore his meniscus. Seth wrestled the WrestleMania in two matches with a torn meniscus. Um which I thought was wild, but he pulled it off and he is the MVP of WrestleMania 40. No one can take that away from him. Um, So, but I think Becky winning is great because I still think you have to build Liv. Liv, the best version of Liv Morgan that we've ever seen is when she goes absolutely batshit insane and out of her mind. And Liv is not crazy enough yet to the, where they need her. So Liv trying to get the title on this revenge who are never getting it, she needs to go absolutely berserk before she gets that title. And then you bring back Rhea. <laughs> That's and the- she gets squashed. Yeah. We just, we just probably got, what, six, eight months? Depending on how bad that break is, it's going to be a while, yeah. 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 It's going to be so- a while. She might come back in the fall. You know, it's 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 a crappy situation. I don't know, man. Giving the belt to Becky makes it it's something Vince would have done. I think I think it's just as Becky's hot. She's got the book tour, like and, yeah, and Liv's been gone for a while. Liv still hasn't been consistently built up yet. Yeah, but she has those fans. Liv Morgan fans are bizarre people. They are. <laughs> they like are. those those diehard Liv Morgan fans, I'm like, just why? <laughs> What am what am I missing? Is it me? I, I would have loved Liv to get the title, but I think that also kind of runs the story short. Eh, I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll but, see. Okay, I'll t- I'll t- I'll take I, Becky. Lynch. I want Liv. To, I just need Liv to be crazier. I I need. I, she needs to go Harley Quinn psychotic. Yeah, and, she's, and then you got you got Roxanne Perez. I already have lucky, Roxanne. <laughs> lucky, lucky bastard. Yes, but with my official second pick, I'm gonna go with another NXT uh, NXT stalwart or NXT a prominent NXT talent who came through came through the WWE system through NXT and took the world by storm. And to be honest with you. 
this person's not really being utilized that great anyways on Raw or SmackDown, so I'm taking Shinsuke. I'm going to take Shinsuke? I'm going to take Shinsuke, yeah. It's a good pick. It's a good, really good pick. It's a very, very, very good pick and one that can actually happen. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like I, don't, I think I think his character would do very well in it. His his anime character would do very oh, well in it. He'd be perfect. Yeah, anime Shinsuke I think works perfectly. Him and Ilya would be a really fun feud. Yeah, exactly. Like I think I think I mean Shinsuke against Obafemi. No, <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt. It would hurt to watch. Yeah. So I I think I think Shinsuke is a great move again. It get. It, it gives the more hardcore, more nostalgic NXT fans something to go back to NXT for to see what's up. Do they retain that audience? Who knows? It sees how we're gonna see how you know they're utilized, but it gives them gives them something to look 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 into a little bit more. So let's move on. Uh, you know, obviously your first couple of picks are gonna be your champion picks. We're gonna move over to the mid cards. Uh, obviously, kayfabe in kind of a shocker to me. Um. Taking Logan Paul, the United States I'm so champion, mad. I'm so mad. And, and moving and moving him from SmackDown to to Monday Night Raw, which means uh, you get lovable Sami Zayn on on SmackDown as your Intercontinental Champion, which I don't think is actually going to occur. Usually, usually, if anything happens on a draft, it's usually the mid card champion switch. Yeah. Historically, that's what ha- that's what has occurred. Um, but I, in my opinion, I don't think that actually occurs. I think Logan Paul being that socialite, being that social media person, you need him on broadcast TV. I don't think. Oh, Taquan, just you wait, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Also, I don't, I like, I have this pipe, not a pipe dream. I have this fantasy of him forming a true faction with A-Town Down Under. They're perfect. They're tailor made for each other. They are. They are really good for each other. <laughs> so you, you think they both stay on SmackDown? In in my opinion, yes. I don't think this actually occurs. I agree. I think I think Logan Paul should be on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, the bigger the bigger name for celebrity should be on the bigger brand, which is Fox. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I think happens. Especially if his brother's gonna fight Mike Tyson. Yeah. You like, need him on Fox. You need him on Fox. You need him on Fox. Uh, it probably is easier for a schedule since Fox is on, uh, since SmackDown's on a Friday. Yeah. You know, travel. But I like Sammy. That's a good roster. I got, uh, Sammy's a good pick. I got Cody. I got Cody. I got the three top baby faces, Cody, Becky, and Sammy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. I need to draft some heels, dude. Where are my heels? Just, I need to draft my third person. I don't even know right now. I'm going to, I got to see my third pick for this, uh, right yeah, now. Yeah. We're going to fuck over and keep it NXT. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I, I'm not doing somebody because I, he's not ready yet. I already know who I'm gonna pick. Actually, you gave me a, he he still needs seasoning right now before you move in the Raw or SmackDown. But he's just he's so good, and I don't want to take anything from him. Uh Trick Williams. You keeping Trick? I'm keeping Trick. I didn't. I also That's didn't. Good pick. I also didn't want you to take Trick. <laughs> That's a good pick. Yeah. That's a good pick. I'm keeping Trick. I would. I would. I would not have taken Trick. You drafted him too early. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but I have more. I have theoretically more drafts, more draft picks than you do because you already have the champions picked. Yeah, no kidding, dude. You get that's you get case. 10 that's picks case plus champ. That's case. You get ball. ten picks. You get ten picks plus champions. That's ca- well, the champions aren't. I don't consider them draftable. Right, but they're still on your roster. They're though. still on my roster. Yeah. So you have a bigger roster. Theoretically, yes. Um, we're only doing we're only doing ten rounds, and we don't even know if they are going to give NXT that many picks in the draft. As Fair. well, they could do like a three, two, one, which would be so messed up. What they should do is like NXT. Anytime we draft someone, you get to draft someone back. That'd be cool. So it's like that'd be cool. It's just be- because if they if they like their first pick, it's like oh, we're Delia Dragunov. We want to keep our champion, but it's like, but you could have taken Roman Reigns. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you could have taken Jimmy Uso, or Jay Uso. Yeah, you've taken anybody. So it's just like that's that's the that's the hard part about NXT being a draft. I mean, Grant, they haven't announced the rules yet. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens, but that's the only problem I have with this draft. Like, it would make more sense if, like, if we raid you, you get to raid us. Yeah. I'm gonna be inter- it's interested to see how how they how they put that all together, uh, with all with everything occurring with NXT. So SmackDown's gonna be really interesting to watch. So moving on. To, I guess, your final automatic picks is your tag champions. Tag teams. Yep. Uh, Kayfabe has selected um, 
for like their own well no there's pretty good balance between heels and faces in their champions kayfabe has selected select an awesome truth the world tag team champions to remain on raw which means um you get a town down under as your wwe tag champions Yay. on smackdown <laughs> <laughs> Listen, a town. You you have some with a town down under. I just think they need Logan Paul with them. Yeah, they need a, they need a they need a leader. They need a big brother. Yeah, yeah. And I think they they would be they would be fantastic. Um, but I it's it's because I think it's because Kayfabe loves Awesome Troop and like who doesn't? Because Troop's amazing. Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> they're incredible. They're absolutely amazing. Um, oh God, my pick now. Then it's going to be like pretty much even even Stevens between me and you, at least. Uh, I got to pick. Oh, I actually know who I'm going to pick. And this is just I need I need a locker room leader and a veteran, especially when this uh, this NXT Women's North America title comes into play. Uh, and I'm I'm still I'm I'm being generous and taking Natty away from everybody. So Natty goes to NXT. Okay. Yeah. Smart. That's good. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna take Natty because I also need a female in this draft. But yeah, I'm gonna. It's not the first. It's not the last female I'm gonna take. But I'm taking Natty. Uh, there's my four pick. Moving on, it's gonna be kind of up in the air for you now, Will. Uh, so, uh, Kayfabe, this is uh, we're midway through Kayfabe round five. Um, has selected their first faction, and boy, is it a steal. <laughs> this is bullshit. This is it such is, bullshit. It is an absolute juggernaut of a pick in the big three, known as Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi as a faction going to Raw. I also don't think this actually occurs. I think you keep him on SmackDown, especially since Jade was announced as a SmackDown signee not too long ago. Yeah, yeah um, keep him on SmackDown. But for our purposes, huge pickup for Raw. And much to the dismay of Will Tarashock. So, well, this is your first, this is your first toss-up pick. Who do you got? It's my first pick, baby. Yeah. Uh, I'm drafting. I'm drafting Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is going to SmackDown. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. No question. No question about it. I need. I need that big giant hairy man on my on my <laughs> roster. <laughs> big giant hairy petty man on your roster. So petty. <laughs> no, it is. It is kind of crazy, right? So my next pick. Uh for 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 NXT. So I'm going through the roster. It's definitely not scripts. Um <laughs> again, these are people who have some sort of name that weren't utilized well enough. And uh this is someone that uh that I think if they are if they are healthy, which I believe they are. And they're ready to go. You bring them back. I'm going with Daddy Deville. Okay. I like. I listen. Okay, Sonia. I like Sonia. She she had a great run in that Daddy Deville character. She obviously had the legal dispute with that stalker for a while. She's kind of been away. I think bring, she got married. She got married as well. Yeah, she got she had a lot of good and bad things happen to her. <laughs> but if she's healthy, if she's ready to go. That character is NXT ready, where she can get a little bit more creative freedom. Um, if that's the route that they're going to go with that. And she can reestablish that character. I really thought she had something with the whole when she turned on Mandy and then Mandy became Mandy. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know. A um, thousand percent. Yeah, she did. There's, there, there's talent there. There's shit there to work with. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going with Daddy DeVille. I think Daddy DeVille is a great character because, you know, NXT is getting the women's mid-card title. So, you need to that needs to be boosted with some women who can b- be potential threats and also women who are... Who you can be like, yeah, that's a good first champion to, to, to you know to work everything off of. So that's why I, yep. I'm going with with Daddy Deville there. Uh, next, we're going we're halfway through now, moving pretty quickly because we have to pick some champions. But uh, Kayfabe with their sixth selection, with their selection in the sixth round, goes interesting. Going with Alba Fire, not Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, just Alba Fire in this selection. Formerly known as Kaylee Ray, one of the longest reigning champions in WWE from the redacted uh, women's. Um, Women's NXT okay. UK Championship. She yeah. had a crazy run, um, and there is potential there. She's just not utilized, being not really being utilized right now on on Raw and or SmackDown. But K is taking them uh, Alba Fire at at number six. Very interesting pick, interesting pick there for for that women's division. Uh, but Will Tereshock, who do you got? 
Oh, dude, I'm not gonna piss you off at this what one. I'm this? taking Car. I'm taking Carmelo. I'm Hayes. not even pissed off because I I didn't think Carmelo was gonna stay anyways. Yep, Carmelo <laughs> Hayes is coming up to the Blue Brands because Melo don't miss and he's gonna knock the fuck out of Sami Zayn. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Listen, Carmelo Hayes is is gonna be the jewel of a draft in real in real life. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, go- he's going to he's going to smash. Yeah, down. he's the jewel of the draft, hands down, no questions asked. He. He he can he can come after Cody. He can like he can be a really big deal. Eventually, after Cody. yeah, yeah, eventually. Really big deal after Cody. Uh, he's God. He's I'm so ha- I'm honestly I am so happy we were able to. It's one of my points of pride in the podcast that we were able to sponsor his final match on the Indies. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it it, it is really cool. Uh, okay, so NXT again. Who is not being used? Who could? Or who who can I keep from NXT? Actually, is a better question that I want to keep you down can keep there for. Chase you. I love Chase you. I don't care what anybody says. I just take Noam Dar. <laughs> oh, you gave me a good idea. I was like, I could steal all of metaphor <laughs> um, from Go here. for it. I'm not gonna take them. Yeah, you know what it is. Although they're probably gonna stay there anyway, right? Because if you don't draft, it stays there. Well, we don't know. We're only doing ten rounds. We don't even know how rounds. These are just we're being like, if we were gonna pick a top ten, who are the top ten people we'd keep? Or pick for our mm-hmm. brand. Um, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, screw it. I'm I'm picking metaphor. I think metaphor stays. I they're so NXT perfect. <laughs> like there's so, yeah. Like I I want Noam Dar to kind of return, but he's doing such good work with with metaphor, and then so metaphor including Noam Dar, Oro Mensa, uh, Lash Legend, and Jakara Jackson who. I saw in person waiting online for those photos. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow is all I have to say about Jakara Jackson. So, yeah, I'm going with my first faction in metaphor. Moving on. Uh, a very surprising pick for Kay in, in round seven. Going with Baron Corbin returning to Raw. Yeah, I didn't see that one Neither coming. But honestly, probably correct. Did, he, did they drop the tag belts? They did drop the tag belts. So they are, nice. Thank yeah. God. Well, because Braun Breaker had also technically signed to SmackDown. Um, yeah, well, I'm drafting him next. Yeah, so. so yeah, so you're going with Braun Breaker. I'm gonna go with Braun Breaker. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's I mean easy. honestly, I, we didn't get to talk about this WrestleMania weekend because so many good things happened at WrestleMania so weekend. And God forbid, God forbid, you forget about Baron Corbin. <laughs> but uh, Baron Corbin wrestled the greatest match he ever wrestled. It was fantastic, at absolutely fantastic. He, I was, I turned, I turned to Charles, I'm like, am I cheering for Baron Corbin? <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was. He looked. Great. <laughs> he did a really he looked great. He's a good wrestler. Yeah. He, so I hope Baron Corbin gets another shot at the main roster because he's underappreciated. I agree with that. He is underappreciated. Um he's it's he he does a lot of things really well. Yes. Oh, he does a lot of things really well. Um, but not like incredibly well. He's like a B at everything. Yeah, but it's it's a solid B. It's a solid it's B. A solid B. <laughs> He's like an eighty six. He's almost a B plus. Yeah, it's a solid B. How's Beth? Fiance? But at everything, yeah, like everything, he's a B at. He's, like he is, he is literally like what's the Bret Hart scale? Um, <laughs> he is a twenty one on the Bret Hart scale. <laughs> yeah, it's solid. It's solid. That means across the board. Yeah. It's a solid look. It's a solid. All right, so my pick NXT. Um, I just had him too. Uh, but I could do really well. Oh, no, I'm not going to take her. Um, oh, that's why I am going to take this person. Someone who, for some reason, they're just not getting right on the roster right now. And they're not. I don't know why, but it's just not hitting. But she needs to uh, She needs to really find her footing again. Because it looks like they brought her up and there's nothing really for her. Uh, Indy Hartwell goes to NXT. Returns to oh. NXT. Interesting. Yeah, totally possible. She's just not doing anything. She just doesn't really exist. They're trying That's something with her and Candace, but it's it's not hitting for me. And so I think we need to reset Indy. Yeah, dude, it's on Hulu Raw. So yeah, we need we need we need to reset Indy Hartwell. Moving on, round eight. Uh, K is really just fantasy booking right now, and this is just showing you how much K watched NXT UK compared to the rest of us. But K is picking the thick boys from Gallus, all three members, Wolfgang and um, the two brothers. Uh, going as a faction to uh, did you miss Monday did you Raw. miss one? What do you mean? Above Baron, did you say Ilya? What do you mean Ilya? 
he, K drafted Ilya Dragunov if he drops. Oh, I put that at the bottom. At the bottom. Okay, I reset bottom it line. because I was like, yeah, because I was like, um. Okay, got yeah, it. Because okay, I was like, yeah, what I'm happens gonna, if I'm, he's... Going off, I'm going off their original list. Yeah, I switched it up. My bad. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, so, so Gallus. Yeah, yeah who Gallus. is Gallus? They're a tag team? They're a faction. There's three of them. It's Wolfgang faction. and um, Joe and Mark Coffey. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, need, I, I need a faction. You do need a faction. So, you do not have a faction whatsoever right now. Yeah, because Judgment Day is already taken because that's where they go with Damien. Well, no. He's, no, K picked Damien uh, as as one. So, And I took Finn. You took Finn? Yeah. Um, ugh, do I want the rest of Judgment So you don't take the rest of Judgment Day? No, I just wanted Finn. You think they, you think they can be broken up? I think okay. he, I, they're slowly like Dom's moving away. Now that Rhea's gone, God yeah. Damn it. All right, I, I guess I'm taking Bobby Lashley's group. Oh, the the Lashley and the Lashley Prophets and Beef have. I don't want yeah, I don't want to call them the Pride, but that's what they're called technically. Yeah, they're 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 very mid. Yeah, I don't. They're not. You could have taken the LWO. Yeah, let me take them instead. <laughs> I'll take I'll take Ray Mysterio, I'll take Ray Mysterio and Carlito. <laughs> you want Ray and Carlito? Yeah. Or do you want the LWO? The LWO, okay. Ray and Carlito are included. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Does so that's so that's Ray Carlito, um, uh, Zelina, Zelina, and Joaquin Wild, and Joaquin and the other and, one. and uh, Cruz. Yeah, Cruz del yes. Toro. Yeah, yes. all of that. So that those five. Those five. Does that also include Andrade? Because I feel yes. yeah, that does include Andrade. Yeah. That's 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 a great pickup. <laughs> that's that's pick a great pickup. I, pick I have up. a very full roster now. Yeah, it's a great pickup. I only need to draft one more lady. I haven't drafted one yet. You haven't drafted a lady at all. You got two more picks to draft women. Um, I know who you should pick, um, but let me go to pick mine. I, ju I just picked Indy. Um, oh, but it also includes Dragon Lee in the LWO as well because he's technically there. No, oh, uh, he only gets injured, so it's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to debut with Randy Orton kicking him in the head and say, sorry, Dragon. <laughs> it's the season premiere. <laughs> Oh my god! I love I love bringing that that segment up on the podcast. Whenever, every draft year, every draft year, I use it. It's a good, it's a great game. It's great. Uh, and how has Randy Orton not been drafted yet? Or like Kevin Owens? That's. Uh, I will. I uh, yeah. I know. I'm just redrafting like the rest of SmackDown. Like, I got <laughs> yeah, all my picks are pretty much already on SmackDown. Yeah, so I'm gonna lose this draft. <laughs> yeah, so. First, K fucked me. <laughs> K screwed you up so badly. Um, next person I'm picking for NXT, somebody who needs to do something while their partner's away, and they already kind of had some good eyes there when they kind of mic checked over Femi. Ivar goes to NXT. Yes, he's already there, but yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I solidify yeah, great Ivar great, great in NXT. Pick. Yep. Because um, I'm him and Oba Femi could have a classic series of matches. Yeah, like really <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Like Obi's going to be like, oh man, you can move. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where, where it's going to go. All right, two more picks left for everybody. Um, Kayfabe taking Lyra Valkyria from NXT after losing to Roxanne Perez. Uh, taking Lyra Valkyria, moving her uh, to, to Monday Night Raw. I don't, I like Lyra. Um... I think she could be main roster ready. Uh, and I think you got to put her with Becky Lynch. Because mm -hmm. Becky's really, really helped, you know, get her over. And Lyra did beat Becky for the NXT women's title. Um, and it's a good call. There's also a big woman that you haven't picked up yet. I'm not even going to pick her to spite you, Will. Um, but Lyra Valkyria to Raw, very interesting, interesting pick. I don't, I don't know if that's gonna if that's going to happen or work out. But I think Lyra is... Raw and SmackDown ready at this point. I agree. Yeah. So who do you got? Well, second to last pick for you. You need you, you um, need women outside of Zelina Vega. <laughs> so I'm gonna take damage control. Okay. Uh that's Dakota, EO, and then I know the tag champions float, but they still get drafted. They still get a home, yeah. They still get a home. So they're primarily on SmackDown, but they can go everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's the, so the Kabuki Wars Kabuki Warriors. EO and Dakota. Correct. Yes. It's a good pick. There's my women's division. <laughs> you're missing <laughs> you're missing one division. person, but that's just me. Um so sorry, so damn Well take them, because I don't know who you're talking about. No, I I'm I'm not going to. Um because that would be I guess I could take Charlotte, right? No, I'm not gonna take Charlotte. Um 
Charlotte back in NXT would be freaking God, people would be so mad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really dumb. So mad. It'd she, be really they dumb. bring her back to NXT and she takes the North American Championship as the inaugural champion. God, <laughs> that would be pretty awesome, though. <laughs> um, for me, uh, again, just is just a... I'm going to pick another one. It's probably my last woman that I'm going to pick. Uh, it's only because she's almost got it. But she needs to be in NXT more, and she can learn a lot from Natty, especially because she's going going up against Natty at the time of his recording tonight in an NXT underground match. Because NXT perfected the underground gimmick, and it's so good. Lola Vice remains on NXT for now. Okay. Lola Vice, former UFC fighter, um, going up against Natty in NXT underground match. I can't. I cannot wait to watch that because I learned the power of a DVR. Um, but I think Lola Bice is a solid pick. All right, so final pick, final uh, of our of our ten rounds. Uh, Man, dude, pick. I want more. I want more picks. I feel cheated. I mean, you can start. We can we can just add like some final bonus picks uh, for us. You know, uh, we'll see yeah, how it goes. Should, so we so yeah, we, we we have some time to kill. We we're, we're making good time. We're at one hundred five right now. Um, so kayfabe's last pick kayfabe is predicting an upset and trick williams beating Ilya dragunov uh so it's going to be a little bit of a caveat so if Ilya dragunov drops tonight uh kayfabe is going to select them to go to monday night raw however if Ilya dragunov doesn't re- does retain which i believe will actually occur uh then kayfabe selection will be a returning braun Strowman to monday night raw as well so a pretty interesting big man uh, it's a good pick. Yeah, it's a good pick. That's actually a really good pick by K. Yeah, so I'm not mad at. Yeah, so final pick will for for SmackDown. Who can you pick up? Damn man, there's one that's that you haven't picked yet. That's that's no brainer for you. I'm not telling you what it is until we have to make the pick and after I make my pick, which I just figured out what I want to do. Oh, dude, I'm an idiot. Let me do the bloodline. <laughs> oh, that, I mean. That is a solid one, which you know. Uh, yeah, I get I get Roman. Uh, J- I didn't pick Jimmy, uh, not Jay. Do I get Jimmy? You get Jimmy. Yeah, I, 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 get I guess you get Roman, Jimmy, Jimmy now. Jimmy, yeah. Solo, Paul, and so, Tomatonga. And The Rock, technically. And The Rock, and All Future. <laughs> and All Future. <laughs> future Bloodline. Future bloodline. bloodline. <laughs> so, like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to take the Bloodline. Yeah, what do you think of uh, essentially Solo Sokoa being the Suge Knight of the Bloodline? I love what Solo is doing. I love what they're doing with Tama Tonga and everything. Like, I it's, love the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's a very good wrinkle because Solo's going to run house. Roman's going to come back. You're like, what the hell are you Solo's, doing? Yeah. Solo's going to be like, you lost too. <laughs> Losing has consequences. <laughs> you lost my tribal chief. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, dude. Like, I, I don't know if I'm gonna buy Roman as a face, but, uh, yeah, the, the fact that we want Roman to go away and then literally ten days later we want Roman is bizarre. Wrestling Listen, fans. Roman's doing fine. He's got a deal with Jordan Brand for sneakers, which is yeah. He's doing a movie. He's doing a movie. He's too. doing a movie, which is absurd. Like Roman's fine. Let Roman. Let Roman get us. Literally, I I'm not a sneakerhead, but I would buy, my dumb wrestling self would buy Rowan sneakers. I probably would. <laughs> I, I, would, Fred, I yeah. would acknowledge him. He acknowledged me. <laughs> he once. acknowledged me once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I would. I'd probably buy the them. Bloodline Twos. <laughs> yeah, the Bloodline Twos. <laughs> like, I'm probably gonna be dope shoes. Um, <laughs> probably are. But yeah, I love what Solo is doing. Tom Tonga is really interesting. Paul Heyman's playing it great. Mm-hmm. And Solo, I mean, Solo came out of the comic. Oh, nice jacket, Solo. And then Paul <laughs> Heyman goes, "Wow, nice threads." I'm like, "Thank you, Paul." <laughs> same wavelength here. <laughs> so it's 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 an it's a, a chapter I did not see coming in the bloodline. Neither did I. And it's just a story that's going to go on forever. Yeah, the greatest story ever told in wrestling, and it keeps on going, uh, which is crazy. My final pick. Again, this is the booster, and to get somebody off a lot of people's hands, is no one's going to pick them. Anyways, uh, but it is a package deal because they are going to show up with their manager, and I think they will do a great time uh, or a good rebuild in NXT because they a lot of people, including Will, say that they need it. I am going with Omas and MVP to NXT. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a good pick too. <laughs> Man, you could rack up a lot of points, Ricky. Mark Hall is a really good pick for NXT. Listen, the Omas is good, but the you know I think he's him and NXT again pairing with Obafemi. You can have a lot of crazy stuff go on. Yeah, he's gonna look even bigger. Yeah, he is gonna look e- even bigger there, and have MVP to kind of steer a ship back there. You got another senior person there to help out some of that young talent coming through. Anyways, uh, it just it just balances stuff out. Uh, so, just to review real quick, our official draft has concluded. So let's just review the picks for everybody. Uh, kayfabe of the GM of Monday Night Raw. Excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, Picking Damian Priest as their world champion, Bailey as their as the WWE Women's Champion, Logan Paul United States Champion, Awesome Truth, uh, the World Tag Champions, all on Raw. Other selections for Kayfabe include the Big Three, which are Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi Alba Fire, Baron Corbin, all of Gallus, uh, Mark and Joe Coffee, and Wolfgang, Lyra Valkyria. And Ilya Dragunov, however, condition that is on a condition that he drops. If not, then Braun Strowman uh, to Raw. For Willie T, the GM of SmackDown, he has selected or was forced to select since K is not here. <laughs> um, Cody Rhodes, the WWE champion, the women's world champion, Becky Lynch, A-Town down under the WWE tag champions and Sami Zayn, the Intercontinental Champion, will has also selected Drew McIntyre, Carmelo Hayes, Braun Breaker, the entire LWO, Zelina Vega, Rey Mysterio, Carlito, uh, Cruz del Toro, Joaquin, uh, I was going to say Joaquin, I was going to call him Joaquin Phoenix, but Joaquin Wilde. Oh. That would be a great pick. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Dragon Lee and Andrade also picking Damage Control, the Kabuki Warriors, um, EO Sky and Dakota and the Bloodline and the rest of the Bloodline lineage in perpetuity because there are more of them coming. Um, NXT, my my uh, show, I picked Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, Whoop That Trick, Williams, Natty, Daddy DeVille, Metaphor, Jakar Jackson, Last Legend, um, Noam Dar and Oru Mensa, Indy Hartwell, Ivar, Lola Vice, and Omas, and MVP. So those are our picks for this uh, this year's draft. But we can go on for a little bit longer. See who else that we could have picked. So well, I will give you this one. You didn't pick Tiffany Stratton. That was yeah, a I did. Dead, I thought that would be a dead giveaway to pick up Tiffy. Yeah, I guess. I wouldn't pick up Tiffy if I had to continue. On I only draft, had five. I only had like five picks, man. While my champions were taken. I know, but as a solid person to like boost your women's division, Tiffy time is perfect. Yeah, I'll draft her 11. <laughs> For me, if I had to continue on, who else would I want to see in NXT? Oh, Nikki Cross. God, yeah, that's a good one, too. <laughs> Nikki Cross. Yeah. Easy. When she comes when she comes back. Yeah. yeah. Nikki Cross. Obviously, I'm not I wouldn't take Randy. Randy would have moved down there, but you would Randy would have been a good pickup for you. Randy would have been good. Kale would have been good. Liv Morgan would have been good. Uh, Jay, Us- J- Jay Uso would have been good. I would have picked KO, but I think KO still r- is doing the bloodline. Yeah, style. no, he's 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 not going anywhere. Um, literally, Alpha Academy would have been good. I thought about them. Well, I don't even know if Alpha Academy is going to even return now that Chad's, you know, yeah. going crazy. Smiley yeah. is here. Look who it is. Smiley. Speaking of alphas. Speaking of alphas here, right? Smiley's in the building. Thanks for joining us. Don't worry, Smiley. None of us pick scripts. <laughs> I thought about it too, for too like three well. seconds. Some people who weren't drafted, we didn't even talk about this. I totally forgot about this because uh, I went into talking about the draft and everything. But some people who were ineligible to be drafted were people who couldn't be drafted because they recently got cut. That included <laughs> uh, Veer and Sanga, Zion Quinn, Von Wagner, And the two biggest names most recently found out today, uh, he will not be going to the moon because he is going to the unemployment line currently. Uh, Cameron Grimes, unfortunately, uh, got cut. And somehow, someway, Will, they finally hindered the gender. Again. Gender (laughs) Again. Gender Mahal has been officially cut. From WWE, 90-day no-compete clauses for all of them. 
Um, Zia Lee also got cut as well, which I was very kind of upset about. Yeah, um, but she wasn't on TV. Yeah, they weren't using her much. I don't think they knew how to use her. I think she also, I don't know if her ability to cut a promo with English was great, although they've been using subtitles for Shinsuke and Damage Control, so I don't know what they missed. Uh, who knows? But there's a lot of there's a lot of potential in Zia Lee. There's still a lot of potential in Cameron Grimes. Um, Jinder Mahal can pretty much do anything he wants at this point. I selfishly want to see Jinder show up at AEW and confront Tony. God. <laughs> I'd watch. That would be, I'd watch. That would, I'd watch. <laughs> I'd watch. I'd watch Jinder Mahal run through AEW. <laughs> I'd watch so badly. Uh, apparently, the cuts are, I guess, a little bit more. We're not. We're we're leaving Reggie alone, Smiley. Um, that's why no one picked him. That's why no one picked him. Um, there's a lot of potential in Jinder Mahal. Uh, I don't know how many more cuts are coming, but let's segue to that. If you were to cut anybody else, Will, who would you cut from the roster? It's really tough, man. Um. Who would I cut, Matt? <laughs> Probably Carlito. <laughs> to be honest, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't really wrestle. Um, I'd probably cut the bald guy in Imperium. Oh, they just took him out. They took out Giovanni. I think he actually is going to get cut, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, Giovanni, Giovanni Vinci. They just turned on him last night. Yeah. I think he so actually is him. going to get cut. Yeah, him. I'm also surprised no one picked up Gunther. Yeah, that is pretty surprising. I'm surprised Kane didn't pick up Gunther. Very surprising. Um, who else could get cut? I don't know. That's really hard. Um, I could see Otis getting cut. I don't know if he'll get cut. Uh, I think if they break Here. up, if they break up Alpha Academy, um, which is where it seems like it, because I I think they're going to reimagine Team Angle with the Creed brothers. And Chad Gable, yeah, which I think would be that's fantastic. smart. Yeah, was, that's smart. They they need that. I think Otis has a potential of breaking out as a singles person. Otis kind of has the Carmella syndrome of always being with somebody. I could see Shotzi getting cut. Is she? Cur- I know she just got married. I think she's also currently injured. I think it would kind of be a dick move for him to cut her. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, I I thought about picking up Shotzi because I think she'd do wonders in NXT. Okay. Also, because I need her to be the host of Halloween Havoc every year. Uh, Tazawa could be cut. Tazawa could be cut, which is unfortunate because he's funny as hell. Um, yeah. <laughs> Apollo Crews could be cut. That I can see. Ashante Adonis could definitely be cut. Especially since b getting more time than him. Yeah. Uh, Beth Phoenix is still on here, which is pretty funny. I find that hysterical, too. Boa. Boa could be cut. Boa has been cut. <laughs> Um, you name a few if you're thinking of few. Cause I'm, I'm just scrolling I'm through thinking, it now. Uh, Brooks Jensen, I think might get the might get the cut. I think Josh Briggs has gotten some time still left on him. Is Cedric? I thought Cedric Alexander was already cut. No, he's still there. He could be cut. He's still there. Uh, Dexter Loomis. Yeah, cut. Dexter. Uh, I like Eddie Thurman. He's got potential. Oh, Drew Gulag. He could be cut. Ah, yeah. Have you heard that? Have you heard that weird thing that's going on with um him and Ronda Rousey? Yeah, yeah. I that came out before Mania. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. Uh, let me see. I don't know the thing of it. It's just fucking weird. The way she described the story was weird to me. Yeah, it's like, and you're clearly jaded. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take everything you say with a lot of salt. Yeah. Um. I wish Greg Miller would get cut. <laughs> you hate Greg God. Miller with a burning. I bad. fucking hate because like, dude, it's like. I can do your job better than you. I know I could. You and your bitch <laughs> Call it jealousy. You're correct. <laughs> Ivy now could get cut. Well, if they... Oh, if she's they, so big. She, yeah, she was... Um, you have to look, Michael Cole's composite is really weird. He looks cross-eyed. Um, Ivy now was on that rock show, like the American... Not American Ninja Warrior. It was like their, his American Gladiator thing. That's where they found Ivy uh-huh. Nile. Um... It'd be interesting to do, see what they do with Ivy Nile if it, if Chad does kind of reform or do a new version of Alpha Academy and like uses mm-hmm. the Creed Brothers. That's where Ivy Nile. That's who Ivy Nile is with. Um, I can see Gallows and Anderson being cut. 
Yeah, they've been running around in NXT. They did some NXT stints. Uh, let's see. Not Pete Dune. I love that Pretty Deadly calls him Dune. Dune, it is really funny. <laughs> Rich Holland, I can see going, although we're doing something with him. Uh... I I I'm not gonna lie. I would cut I would cut scripts, aka Reggie. That's just that's just me being me. Damn, Caleb Braxton at 17 spoke in front of the president G. W. Bush at the White House. For what? She as a teenager she participated in a public speaking competitions. Oh. So she competed at the White House. That's nuts. In public speaking. <laughs> that's that's a pretty wild bio, Miss Caleb Braxton. Yeah, that's a crazy bio. Um, I think Valentine Flores is already cut. Oh, I forgot about him. I would cut Wendy Chu if she has been cut already. Um, oh, I sh- he's injured. That's why I didn't even think about him. I should have picked up a returning Wesley. Ah, uh, okay. We're gonna go Wesley would have been a great pick. I almost picked up. I almost picked up Zoe Stark. I can see Meechin being cut too. Someone's got to wrestle in that family. I don't think they got me chin because Keith Lee's not doing anything. Um, it's interesting. It's gonna- Nikita Lyons comes back soon, I hope. Yeah, Tornade CLs are a son of a bitch. <laughs> Nikita Ly- could you imagine Nikita Lyons on like SmackDown doing the uh, the split pin? Yeah. <laughs> I, I very much. Who is Ryan Popola? Oh, he's he's part of the bump. Oh, okay. So they they put a lot of their host on there as well, yeah. not actual performers. Yeah. Seth's photo was really funny. I like how Shane's still here too. <laughs> Sean Spears. Sean Spears could be cut. Even though he just got back. <laughs> He's, <Yep. laughs> He's always on the block, dude. <laughs> Tamina's still on the roster? No, she's getting cut. I thought she already was cut, actually. I don't think she was unless she didn't announce it. You know. Yeah, I think I think everyone else stays. They better not cut Vic Joseph, I swear to Christ. I'm surprised Vic Joseph isn't the heir apparent because uh Cole, I don't know if you watched uh WrestleMania back yet. Cole called um Corey Graves the heir apparent to the announced teams. God damn. Yeah, I was like, Oh, that's that's news to me. <laughs> yeah, that is that is definitely news. <laughs> yeah. I definitely thought it was Vic Joseph's spot to lose. No, Corey's been there forever. That's true. That's true. He, he he does a decent job covering SmackDown. Oh, and Zoe Stark. Zoe Stark could totally be cut. Yeah. Uh, Shayna Baszler could also be cut. Shayna Baz. So we'll see what happens. But that is all we have uh, this week for our WWE uh, draft. We are going to see if we got it all right or all wrong. I, I'm assuming Kane's got some wrong here. I'm I'd, I, fucked. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, Ricky could run away with this easily. I, yeah, because I, I was, I was thinking smart. Because if I was thinking like fantasy, I'd be like, I take Tiffy, I'll take Sami Zayn, you know, like. Uh, since we got to figure out, we also have to figure out what we're battling for. Oh, like who wins in the end? Yeah, not who wins in the end, but like what we win in the end. Like I don't want like a yeah, high five. All our points. Yeah. I don't want like a high five. We need to. We need to. You want? Do you want to make a belt? Like just create a, make it a belt. Yeah, create, create a custom belt. I mean, it's got to ship it back and forth. We could year do to that. Year. It is possible. It'll probably, probably what a few hundred bucks between the three of us. It's probably like say, say it's like one fifty each. That could be done. Right. It's what four fifty. Yeah. 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 That's doable. It's doable. It's a lot of custom belt plays. I do. I do a custom belt for my fantasy team. So. I mean, they also league. get a, they also get like a like a cheap one and make it funny. <laughs> get like a kid's title. Yeah. Our KO, our KO, you know what we do? We do the KOTR title and the side plates are our old logos. Oh, do we have enough of the old logos? Um We have three. Yeah, I have them. <laughs> <laughs> I have all of them. I got all of them somewhere. Like Oh, you know what? Um, we get our cousin we do four side plates. The fourth side plate could be the new KOTR. Remember the hack the job I went? <laughs> the oh hack job what I did? No, you get you two side plates. Okay, that's fine. Let me let me look. Podcast. <laughs> we have three. Uh, John C. M. White on black. We there's a. Yeah, I I got I got the old one, the white the the, the purple the one, the red ropes, the one like the one, the one my hat, the one my hat's on. The, oh, the red with that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I still have that we one. We can do that too. Yeah, I have the original original. You know the the. 
the freaking Microsoft Paint one you you originally had. Yeah, I, I <laughs> don't. I'm surprised I don't. I, I I'm surprised I don't have that in here. We can make that a classic line. It'd be really funny. <laughs> Just like put it on a t-shirt somewhere. <laughs> God, my friend Rob made that. No, he made a worse one. I forget who made them. No, my friend Pat Hopkins made the first oh, one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I was I went to my friend Carly. I was like, hey, Carly, see this logo? Can you do it better? <laughs> and she gave me the white on the black. It was good. Which is, it's my favorite. Yeah, it's good. It's my, it's my favorite one, selfishly. It's a very good one. So, you know, we can definitely figure it out. But uh, at, at this point in time, I guess it's time to get fucking out of here, right? We've done our draft. We've done all we need to do. Let's get this show on the road and move to the post show at some point. So, Will, if you may, sir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 373 draft day. We have attempted and probably have failed in correctly picking what superstars will go where in this year's version of a WWE draft. One thing is for sure, though, the brand split's not going to even be realized after like three weeks from now anyway. So none of this is even actually going to matter. But what does matter is that my name is King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets. B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five-star reviews. The links to all of that are in the description below. If you like what you are listening to or what you are watching, make sure you are following us um, and following our network, sh- our network brand, Wrestle Addict Radio, the Cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast, which is home to Kings of the Rings Podcast, the Fretzel Mania Podcast, the YLP Young Lions Perspective Podcast, and the Brace for Impact Wrestling Podcast. So we do have a podcast that covers TNA all on Wrestle Addict Radio. Follow Wrestle Addict Radio socials on Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else. So links to all of that are in the description below. Will Tarashock. Yeah, ladies and germs, Yankees about to pick up this dub. It's one out in the ninth inning, so that's a, that's good there news. Go. Hope you all like there baseball. It's now a base. It's now a baseball podcast, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. My name is Will Tarashuk. T is in Thomas. A R A S H U K. I don't got plugs this week. I'm not plugging anything. There you go. So, uh, other than uh, my new book's coming out, I'm <laughs> um, imagine if I wrote a book. What would, what would the title of my book be? Uh, I, the title of your book? Jesus Christ! Oh. Yeah, what would the title of my book be? Uh, I, I American minutes. Yeah. <laughs> American minutes. American minutes. That's yeah. what Rest. All right, Peter. All right, Peter. All right, Peter. Yeah. American minutes. So when we come back next week, folks, we're going to figure out the results of our job. We're probably going to comment on AEW Dynasty two weeks later because what the hell? Who cares? Um, and and we're going to get ready for backlash in France and a a midday. PLE. It's going to be Saturday at twelve thirty. Is what backlash is going to be. So oh, hell yeah. yeah. So get ready for brunch and wrestling that weekend, folks. So until next week, folks. Goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. And maybe also if you're joining us on the post show since we're doing this live. And oh yeah, there is one final pick in the KLTR draft. It's Mister Irrelevant, and that goes to Slack because <laughs> fuck you, Slack. <laughs> we'll see you next week. At least he got. At least he got drafted. <laughs> and he's got- This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.